Hi again everybody, it's the History Nerd. I am back in the man cave and in this video we are going to unbox the Stetson Rancher 10X cowboy hat that magically appeared on my doorstep today thanks to some dude driving a truck that had FedEx written on the side of it. Now the Rancher is among the largest cowboy hats Stetson currently makes in terms of crown height and brim width. And for that reason, I thought it might be interesting to share with you the history of the largest cowboy hat that Stetson ever produced. So let's get started. Uh, from the very start of his career, John Stetson was known for making some big ass hats for his era. Uh, he was born in 1830, one of a, well, he was uh, one of 12 children born to his mother and father who were professional hat makers. So John Stetson learned the hatter's trade as a child. When he became a young man, he came down with tuberculosis and he was forced to move out west because the climate was better out west for people who suffered from that condition. Uh, Stetson became one of only 20% of those who had tuberculosis in the 19th century that actually survived having the disease. Now, while he was out west, he went on, a, on, on an extended hunting trip with friends to Pikes Peak. And while he was on that trip, he discovered that the hats men wore during that time period were completely useless for living in the wild or traveling across the west. Men of that era uh, mostly wore bowler hats. They're also known as derby hats. They look like an upside down black bowl on top of your head with this little short brim that goes around it. Uh, if you've ever seen a uh, Charlie Chaplin Little Tramp movie, Charlie Chaplin wore a bowler hat. And Stetson said, this hat is useless out here while I'm traveling to, trying to survive on Pikes Peak. So he decided he would use the skills he developed as a hatter and make his own hat. Stetson got the fur from the animals they killed on the hunting trip. And with that fur, he put it in hot water and matted the hair together and made fur felt. And then he got a knife and he cut out a pattern and he fashioned a, a hat that he thought was ideal for living outside and traveling across the West. Um, it was it was it was completely new hat for that time. The legend says when he came back into town, a horseman saw the hat and became so enamored with it that he offered John Stetson five dollars, which was a princely sum in the mid 1800s, uh, to buy the hat. So Stetson said, "Hey, I'm onto something here." And when he moved back east to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He borrowed some money, opened his hat making business, and started producing the Boss of the Plains, which was the hat he had designed while hunting on Pikes Peak. Uh, the Boss of the Plains had a large brim for that era and a high crown for that era. And it became wildly popular uh, because those who lived in the West and traveled a long distance realized the boss of the plains was as much a tool as it was a hat. Uh, it offered protection from the sun. It gave you shade. Uh, it kept the rain and wind off of you. Uh, you could use it to fan a fire if you were building a fire outside. You could use it to water your horse. There's the famous painting that's on many Stetson boxes of the man watering his horse from his watertight Stetson hat. Some men used it uh, as a safety deposit box. They put their important papers and their valuables underneath this tall crown hat um, and traveled with them. Um, when you were uh, going across the plains, if you needed to signal somebody from a long distance, a bowler hat wouldn't get their attention. But if you wave a large brim, high crown boss of the plains hat, you're probably gonna attract their attention. And cowboys, I'm sure at the time, discovered that they looked much cooler riding a bucking horse and waving a boss of the plains hat 
than they did riding a bucking horse, waving one of those little candy ass Charlie Chaplin bowler hats. Um, so the Boston Plains became wildly popular and spawned the business that is still going today. About 25 years ago, in 1998, a woman showed up at the Antiques Roadshow and brought a Boss of the Plains hat. It turned out to be a Boss of the Plains hat uh, and showed it to the appraiser and it looked like this. Now, I am shocked that when the appraisal came in, that hat appraised for only $500 to $1,000. For folks like us who love Stetsons or folks like us who love history, you would think an original 1870s John Stetson boss of the Plains hat would go for much higher, but the guy appraised it at the top end of $1,000, which is about $1,700 today with inflation. But uh, after saying all that, the boss of the Plains is not the largest hat, cowboy hat Stetson has ever made. Some of you may think, well, Tom Mix, the movie Cowboy wore a big hat. Maybe Tom Mix's hat was the biggest hat uh, Stetson ever made. It was not. It was not even the biggest movie cowboy hat that Stetson made. Tim McCoy made westerns in the 20s and 30s, and he wore a Stetson hat that had a seven and a half inch crown, a five inch brim, and the brim had a kettle curl around it. It was a monstrously big hat, almost comical to look at today. But that is not the biggest cowboy hat Stetson has ever made. Stetson presented its largest ever cowboy hat to a guy named Robert Ripley, whose name may be, may be familiar to some, whose name may be familiar to some of you. Ripley started the syndicated cartoon, Ripley's Believe It or Not, that later became books, and there have been at least two TV series, one in the 80s and one in the 2000s that were Ripley's Believe It or Not. And there are Ripley's museums all across the country today, Ripley's Believe It or Not museums. So as a publicity stunt, Stetson uh, gave its largest ever wearable cowboy hat to Robert Ripley, and it was presented to him by Carmen Miranda, who was a singer and movie star back in the 40s. Uh, she was known as the Brazilian bombshell. She used to sing boom, chicka, boom, chicka, boom songs, and she had a big fruit bowl on top of her head. I'm sure you've all seen pictures of Carmen Miranda. So at this publicity stunt, uh, Miranda presented the largest ever Stetson to Robert Ripley, and that Stetson had a 10-inch high crown, it had a seven inch brim, a uh, seven and a half inch brim that I believe also had a kettle curl around it. It was a seven uh, X beaver uh, hat. Uh, the brim was raw edge, by, by the way. It was a seven X uh, beaver hat. Robert Ripley wore a seven and a quarter inch size hat and it had a beautiful, beautiful cloisonne hat pin on it that I wish they still made today. So Ripley got this hat. There's a picture of him wearing the hat, and uh, he is by far the goofiest guy who's ever worn a cowboy hat in that picture. Um, he looks as goofy as anybody I've ever seen. Um, so as I say that about Robert Ripley wearing a big cowboy hat, uh, I think it's time for me to unbox my big cowboy hat. So let's take a look and see what is inside the box. Now that you know the history of the largest hat Stetson has ever made. Now the Rancher is a huge hat. Uh, You've got to either be a big guy like me to wear this hat, or you have to have a lot of swagger. Uh, this is the kind of hat that Boss Hogg wore on the Dukes of Hazard. He didn't wear a, 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 a rancher, but he wore a tall crowned white hat like this. As a matter of fact, I have found a photo of the actual hat that Sora Book wore in his portrayal of Boss Hog, because I thought y'all might like to see it. Uh, you can see it's a Stetson hat. It's got a tall crown. It's got a big brim. 
Um, it was actually designed by Nudie's Rodeo Tailors. Nudie Cohn was the guy who designed all the sequin suits that all the country music stars wore in the 50s and 60s. Uh, Nudie's Rodeo Tailors designed the hat, but it was made for Boss Hogg, Sorrel Book, by Stetson. So we're going to open this box here and we're going to look inside and see what awaits us. Now, I ordered this hat from a company called One Too Many Ranch Hats and Accessories. I found it online. Um, I paid about $128 for this hat, which is the uh, lowest amount that I was pretty much able to find in the seven and three quarter size that my giant noggin requires. Now I know I'm supposed to put the hat with the crown side down, but I'm showing it to you here. Here is the uh, Stetson Rancher hat. You can see it's got a tall, tall five inch crown. It's got a four inch brim. Uh, it's got a grow grain uh, hat band that is very similar to the one that you find on the open road straw hat. Um, it's got the same hat pin as the open road. It is a JBS, John Bateman Stetson branding iron. Um, this hat is a 10X hat. Um, uh, I have talked about in other videos about the X scale rating for straw hats. I talked in detail in one of the videos, which I will link below, where I was comparing the 10X and 6X uh, straw open road hats. But the uh, X scale of hats is based upon, of straw hats, is based upon the width of the straw and the tightness of the weave. This is the 10X uh, Rancher. There is a 100X Rancher that costs $185 and it comes in an actual Stetson box. It's not shipped in a plain box like this. It comes in an actual Stetson box. And it is a beautiful hat. But I just did not want to spend $185 on a straw hat. So uh, you'll see that this hat is vented. Um, you know, most of the heat escapes your body from the top of your head. That's why in the winter they say always wear a hat when you're outside. You wear a hat, it keeps the heat in your body. Well, in the summer, uh, you don't want to keep the heat in, you want the heat to escape. So this has the vent holes that help the heat escape because you wear these hats in the spring and summer when it's warm. Uh, if we look inside, we see the Stetson leather hat band. We see the uh, Stetson label that shows the cowboy letting his horse drink from his Stetson hat. Uh, this side of the hat says uh, John B. Stetson Company, made in the USA. Um, and then uh, the front of the hat has Stetson with 10 X's on it. Um, so this is the Stetson Rancher hat. Now, um, let, let me, uh, I'm gonna try this hat on. Uh, I've never tried one of these hats on. I just wanted the hat, so I bought it. And I had read, you gotta be a big guy like me to wear one, so I said for poops and giggles, I'll order one. Um, like I said, it was $128 from one too many ranch hats and accessories. They have an online store and an eBay store. Um, so I ordered this hat uh, because it's gonna warm up here before too long and I needed a good uh, straw hat to wear. Um, as I've said before though, I can't see what I look like with my setup the way it is. Uh, you can see what I look like, but I won't know until I edit this video what I look like. So when I put this big hat on my head, you will see what I look like uh, before I see what I look like. So um, let's put it on and see how it looks. There you go, folks. It's actually, you know, these things run a little big. This hat 
I think is just a tad big, but I can put some hat sizers under the band and make it feel a little better. But uh, there you go. There's the five inch crown, the four inch brim. These also come with, uh, you can get this with a three and a half inch brim and a four and five eighths crown, uh, the same hat. But I decided it's time to either go big or go home. So there you go, folks. There is my 10X Stetson Rancher hat. Now, I promised uh, to talk, tell you about the biggest hat Stetson ever made, which I did. I promised to unbox the Rancher, which I did, and I'm modeling it for you now. But I also said I would show you the smallest hats that Stetson has made. So where is that? Well, back in the 50s, 40s, 50s, and 60s, when all men wore hats, Stetson would run ads encouraging wives to buy their husbands gift certificates for Christmas for a Stetson hat because you can't really buy a hat for somebody. Um, uh, 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 if you don't know their size, if you don't know what kind of hat they like, most men like to try on the hat and see how it looks and decide which one color and everything. So Stetson would simply encourage women to buy their husbands a gift certificate. But so you wouldn't just hand your husband an envelope that had a gift certificate in it. If you bought a gift certificate, you got one of these. This is a Stetson hat box. And inside the box is a little teeny Stetson hat. And you would put the gift certificate inside the box with your small Stetson hat. Um, you can find these rather easily on eBay. They're really neat to own. Uh, I've actually got a couple of these. Um, these are really neat to own. If you look up Stetson Salesman Sample, because most people don't know that these came with gift certificates. If you look up Stetson Salesman Sample on eBay, you will see a lot of these for sale. And I don't think I've paid more than $20 for the ones that I have bought. So there you go, folks. The story of the biggest Stetson ever made, the story of the smallest Stetsons made, and here is my 10X Rancher straw hat, just like I promised. Um, I hope that you enjoyed this content and the other videos that I have produced. If you're new to this channel, go take a look at those. In the meantime, I'm going to ask you, as I always do, to please give me a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and ring that bell so the next time I come forward with an action-packed, exciting History Nerds Man Cave adventure, you will be notified. Uh, I'm going to end this video like I end all of my videos by encouraging all of you. And I appreciate all of you who watch the videos and comment and reach out to me. It means more to me than you can know. I want to encourage all of you to be good, be well, be happy, and goodbye.